Attention, everybody. Brian is clean. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome to Craft Beer Republic. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. I am Greg. I am being joined all the way from the North Pole, the Polar Flex Press. How's it going? It's going great, man. I figured this episode, it's going to ring everybody into the, the merry month of December. So everybody, all aboard the Polar Fle- Flex Press. Oh. Woo, woo. <laughs> Can I get VIP tickets on that train? I'm all I'm all oh, here You don't for even it. need tickets. You get a free ride. Oh, can I ride in the caboose? Yeah, it's just like mustaches. Yeah. Free ride for Greg. <laughs> oh wow. It's gonna be one of those kind of shows. And joining us for absolutely no money at all, everyone's favorite intern, intern Brian. How's it going? Going well, Greg. Thanks for having me. Appreciate Absol- it. Yeah. Now Welcome was, in Brian. I was doing some math today. Have you not been on Craft Beer Republic? I don't think I have. I think my last appearance was uh, back way back when, when you guys were the gentlemen. Yeah, we don't talk about those guys. No, I'm just kidding. No, yeah, we're those I, guys. I kind of forgot that you hadn't been on since the changeover, but uh, but welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, long time listener, first time participant. We appreciate your pro bono work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> long time, first time. Uh, all right, very good. <laughs> Lots to get to. Uh, we have a very important question for Brian here. Going to talk about our Thanksgivings. Uh, Coley is proven why she's the best member of the Booze League. What a some champ. beers, yeah, some beers to talk about. Some weird alcohol laws, of course, a little bit of booze news. But let's kick the hydration off by answering the most important question of the night. In a world where craft beer is king, a world where muscles are bigger than growlers, only one tongue can guide us. One man, one tongue, one tongue jobber. In this world, we must find out what is flex drinking. The world wants to know. Well, let me just answer that question right about now. Uh, Today, I am drinking Modest Brewing Company out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. They're Abra Cadaver. This is a double dry hopped, double New England IPA, uh, cumulative 4.03 on the old untapped. Mm. And they say New England double IPA brewed with Maris Otter, Golden Promise, Red X, Malted Oats, and Flake Oats, Whirlpool Hop, and double dry hopped with our hand selected blend of Sultana, Citra, Eldorado Cryo, and Strata. And for anybody who wants to know, the Sultana Hop is actually just the renamed Denali Hop. Oh. So there's a little fun fact. Uh, there's little some flex nerd fact shit for you. For you. Yeah, flex. yeah, the like Denali that? Hop was actually previously named the McKinley Hop. I thought you were going to say the Yukon Hop. And there's a McKinley Avenue vehicles. in downtown Milwaukee, so this has now become full circle. Oh, my gosh. Love it. Love you. <laughs> All right. So, so how is it? <laughs> Well, we'll dig the old schnoz in there. Yeah. Get a, get a couple whiffs here. A little bit uh, fruity on the citrus end. You get a, a touch of like the uh, like the, the pithy citrus, almost like the, the peel. And mm-hmm. uh, it's, qu- it's quite refreshing. It's not overpowering on the, on the aroma and uh, kind of makes you want to know what it tastes like. So without further ado, we'll get the old tongue jabber <laughs> ready and we'll dive in. I wish people could see Flex's face when he does this. They're really missing out. They are. So <laughs> I just love myself that much. Uh, so the, the yeah. citrusy uh, aromas really go into the flavor. And again, like the aroma wasn't overpowering. The taste isn't overpowering. And for uh, an IPA brewed with so many oats, you know, and the double dry hop, you usually get that real creamy kind of thick mouthfeel to this. It's actually a lot lighter uh, that then I would expect um, a little bit more carbonated too, so you get almost like an effervescent taste on the tongue. Um, a little flick of bitterness in there, you know, almost like a from mm. from if you eat a, a grapefruit or something like that. It's actually sure. quite enjoyable. It's uh, kind of like a double dry hop that's almost refreshing, I guess, instead of filling. If that 
make mm-hmm, sense to you? Mm-hmm. It's like not chunky. Yeah, it's uh just real not easy thick. drinking and it let me see here. It comes in at an eight point three ABV and it's I mean, you'd never guess it. It drinks pretty damn sessionable. Um it's a little dangerous. It, it's it's this is very dangerous. I'm actually already about halfway gone with it and we've been on the show for about I don't know what, eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, cheers to these guys. Um they actually uh just came into Wisconsin, I would say a little over a year ago and uh they sent me a cool nice. hat you know to some of and some of their beers so it uh, i actually haven't taken this hat off in about a year so <laughs> Cheer, cheers to <laughs> modest and uh keep making those uh good beers cheers to modest hopefully they can send you some shampoo your your wife's getting tired <laughs> of you not taking off that hat the hat's not coming off oh dear well it sounds delicious super wow sounds delicious words are already hard i'm super love jealous. those nights um all right we need to find out very important information, almost as important as what Flex is drinking. <laughs> so is there a drum roll for this? <laughs> it should be. Last week on the show, we had a very heated discussion with Coley as to the uh, legitimacy of eggnog as a delicious holiday oh. beverage. And I think Flex and I are on the right side of history in proclaiming that it is disgusting. Well, Oh, yes, I just threw up. <laughs> so to Brian, are you also of the eggnog dislike or are you on team erica and coley on your eggnog decision okay so i kind of got to split the baby here like regular eggnog that comes in the carton no booze in it i think is gross um i'm not a fan of that but the eggnog that Mm. you get pre-brandied and then you sprinkle a little nutmeg on it it's not as thick the consistency is better and oh. the booze is already in it. And if you do throw the nutmeg in, it's like a pre-made cocktail rather than drinking like disgusting booger water or whatever the <laughs> hell you want to call it. I mean, it's chunky. Yeah, that water. is a great analogy. The booger water. I love that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just I always think about the uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and the dog snots. And I'm like. That's that's what it feels like they're drinking when they're <laughs> filling the eggnog in the little moose glass. Yeah, it's so like ugh, just thick and slimy. And so, so the pre-mixed boozy one that is it thinner because the booze is already in it. Like what? What? Yeah, happens? I think it's thinner because just because of the booze that's in it. But I also think that it's. I mean, it's kind of a scientific thing. It's like shelf stable already, so it's not. You know, it's not real eggnog. So if you're asking me if I like mm. real eggnog, then no, I don't. But I try. <laughs> so it's probably worse for you too. Yeah, huh? probably. But you know, you're drinking, so the alcohol kills whatever bad is in it. So it's good. That's valid. Right. That's valid. You're yeah. already destroying your liver. Yeah. So would you say that, Would you say the alcoholic eggnog is like the sex panther ratio, where it's like good sixty percent <laughs> of the time, every time, or would you consider the alcoholic eggnog just good? No, I think it's definitely, it's good in relation to, you got to have a holiday festive something. Like, I wouldn't just get the alcoholic eggnog on a Thursday, just chilling, you know, but. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not a solo drink. Yeah, and plus you can you can extra booze it, you know, you can always double up that's on true. the booze that's in it, um, you know, Irish it up, as, as it were, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I think that's always a good Do call. Do you say top of the morning as you're dumping <laughs> some in there? Depends on when I'm drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that being said, if uh, you had your choice as to your holiday beverage of any holiday beverage, what would it be? What What's Christmas to you in alcohol for? Um, I don't know. I like a good hot toddy. Mm, okay. Which you know has like, it's kind of like a a rum based um, with spices. I thought hot toddies were whiskey. I thought they were they just rum? hot guys named Todd. You can. T- <laughs> That's no. There's no such thing. <laughs> Todd's are all terrible. Um, No, I so I also like uh, when I was in Ireland, I had my family make me this when I was sick. They made me a hot whiskey and it's literally Mm. just like whiskey heated up with like a squeeze of orange and an orange rind in it. And I mean, that to me is like, you know, cures whatever ails you. So. You know, yeah, I think that's a grandpa's holiday. old cough medicine, right? That's that's right. right, right on. 
Hey man, that that old cheap whiskey cured me of Rona a year and a half or coming up on two. I believe years it. Ago. I believe so it. That's how I was testing to see if my my taste was coming back. We had some really disgusting cheap whiskey <laughs> in the house. And so just every night, just take a little sip. And finally, one night, I was like, "Oh, ah, I can taste." <laughs> yeah, and Deb's got a bottle of shitty. Of... <laughs> I was just what gonna say, that? Deb's got a bottle of Canadian Club from like the seventies. <laughs> That wow. she found in she found in a storage unit, and she was keeping it. <laughs> and she was like, "This has got to be. This has got to taste like something because it's been aging for forty years." So we finally cracked it open one night when we were hammered, and it was awful. So was, <laughs> was it one of her storage units, or did she just rummage around old storage units? <laughs> yeah, no, that's her other job. She goes and she's like storage wars. <laughs> yup, that's a twenty three dollar bill right there. That's, that's <laughs> all day. That's a 50-year-old bottle of Canadian Club. I need that. <laughs> I, I don't know why I did that voice for you, Deb. I apologize. <laughs> it was very fitting. And then after that, you guys had some quesaritos, I'm sure. So uh, The new is the uh, grilled cheese double steak burrito at Taco oh, Bell. Okay. Uh, I advise okay. you to definitely try it. Research that's my, that's my Taco Bell plug for the, okay. for the episode. Great, great. Uh, all right, Flex, on to you. Last week, I had to, I had to talk about it because I, I just laughed so hard. You really stepped outside your comfort zone and decided to break your algorithm and buy a beer that was neither high enough in booze or cheap enough. Did it even fit the, the pretty can art? So the can art was pretty gnarly. But that was only the, the one of only three pillars that it hit, right? Yeah, I'm really ashamed of myself. Uh, and I just want to let you know that I... I paced down the the aisle that this beer was in about 17 times and the only thing <laughs> that kept crossing my mind is whether or not to pull the trigger on this beer and i will say the brewery name because uh i'm a man of my word right so if my sure. algorithm doesn't work i'm going to let people know that it doesn't work so weld works out of colorado put out a strawberry cotton candy sour wheat ale mm. I think it came in at about a 4.3% ABV, which is fairly low on that scale. Yeah. Obviously, you might as well just get a Keystone Light or something. And uh, <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> don't, though. Uh, the can art was pretty wild. Uh, a lot, like, just a bunch of cones of cotton candy on it. Really well done. Nice artwork. Bright, vibrant pink. And th the price tag on it was sixteen ninety nine. And I'm trying to think to myself, is this sixteen ninety nine for a four percent can, you know, four pack gonna be worth it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I let my guard down, Greg, and I let my love and <laughs> affinity for cotton candy flavored shit get the best of me. <laughs> and I let oh. this beer sit in my fridge for about two days because I was so excited for it. Everybody has to know this. I buy a beer that I'm really excited for and I put it on a fucking pedestal. So here this beer is just glowing in an aura in my beer fridge. And I'm like, Saturday night, it's time to drink this thing. Three words for you. Treat yourself. Amen, brother. And I pour it out and I take a, get the old schnoz ready. I clean it out, ready for some fresh sniffing. <laughs> and I almost gag because it sounds like somebody ate a bunch of sugar and then just vomited out the sugar. That's the, awful. It was horrible. The The beer smelled like sugary vomit. Like, there, there's oh. no other way to put it. And that's too bad. I love Weldworks. Everything I've ever had from them is really good. And that's the thing is they do they do really great stuff. So I'm putting no no shame on them, no shade casting towards them. The beer, you know, breweries do beers and some just don't hit it. Yeah, um, but steer clear of that cotton candy garbage. Yeah, you know, and there was like little to no strawberry flavor, little to no cotton candy flavor. Mm. And the taste on this beer is like, y'all have, have had Warheads, right? The candy? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? And you know it takes about two seconds for that sourness to kick in. And then for about the next three to four seconds, it's like almost unbearable. Well, that was the entirety of this beer. Like, the sour started and then it never stopped. And then you took another sip of the beer and the sour started and it never stopped, and it had you with that that face that, on the warhead wrapper where you're like fish, you know, fish lipping it, like <laughs> you know, your your eyes are half closed and you're sweating, right? Um, just you're some Instagram influencer taking yeah. a selfie, yeah. And you know that the can was so good that I did want to put it on, and I I just couldn't do it to myself, and 
Never again. Lesson learned. Stick to the algorithm. Stick to the algorithm. What'd you do with the other three? As Greg says, plug and chug. Hmm. I got two more down after that first night, so one cotton candy shit beer left to go, and uh, let's uh, let's, let's rally. <laughs> no man left behind. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I, I, I really don't believe in drain pours, so uh, if I if I pay my, or use my hard earned money to pay for this beer, I'm gonna gonna drink that hard earned money, even though it tastes like shit. Mm-hmm. That shitty shitty money. Yeah. Well. Now we know. Lesson learned. Stick yes. to the algorithm. Stick to the algorithm, everybody. Just listen. Yes. Life lesson. Yeah. Um, this past week was Thanksgiving. Anybody get like super hammered on Thanksgiving and like, you know, fall over on a turkey or anything? Anything good happened to anybody? I uh, didn't really drink on Thanksgiving or the day after. Um, All right. It's been nice talking to you. We'll see you next time. <laughs> well, we didn't have family this year. We didn't do the whole big family thing. Uh, Otherwise, I would uh, normally that'll get do it, hammered. Yeah. But this year it was just Deb and my mother in law and and myself. So, you know, there wasn't the stress or the anxiety that causes binge drinking that we'd normally have during the holidays. Oh, whenever my mother in law is in town, I binge drink like a mother. <laughs> I, on the other hand, only drink because my mother in law encourages it because she knows oh. who my wife is. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> No comment. Zing. <laughs> no, we started a new tradition this year because it was just, you know, adults and just the three of us. So we actually had our first annual Wix giving, which is where we all get together, eat food, and watch that that holy trilogy of John Wick. <laughs> I was ho- I was hoping that's what you were going to say. I'm yep. like, please tell me you got together and you just watched John Wick all night long. It- it was everything I thought it could be and so, so much more. I thought you were going to say like you constructed <laughs> baskets or something. You said wicks. I was thinking like making wicks. candles. That that was oh, like, too, yeah. that was second place for me. Wicker. Oh, uh, well, well, how exciting of you to uh, <laughs> new holiday tradition. Yay. Tra- trade in the booze for John Wick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hotter, but yeah. What about you, Flex? Anything good happen over there? Um, I picked up a couple uh, craft beers couple days before Thanksgiving, and then I had to pick up an appetizer after work uh, on Thanksgiving, because I'm a mm. savage, and I mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. gladly work holidays. So then I actually bought uh, a dessert beer that just so happened to be in the case at the, the store I shopped at, and it was Energy City. So they're really mm-hmm. known for their overly fruited sours and right. uh, dessert-style beers, and I picked up their pumpkin parfait. Mm. That shit hit on all cylinders, man. Thanksgiving. Oh, good. Well, they, oh yeah, it was great. Thanksgiving will never be the same. Is that a new tradition for you too? I mean, if they do it every year, I you bet your ass I'm going to pick that up every year and maybe watch a little John Wick. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'm a pretty big football fan, so I don't know if I'll be able to turn the <laughs> turn the games off for some John Wick. But well, fair. you know, you can at least watch one when the Lions are playing. True. Th- that is true. That is true. But I also, I mean, I'm sitting here in my basement staring at three TVs, so I figure I could probably watch football and John Wick at the same time. So that's also true. Yes, I, I think I think Very. we can make it happen next year. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, no John Wick. In fact, I didn't drink at Thanksgiving. I did drink later that night when I was away from people. No. What now? But, do uh, you do early dinner Thanksgiving? So here, my I mean, generally. Generally, I go see like my mom's family for Thanksgiving, or at least like the the bulk of Thanksgiving. You know, being divorced kid, you know, divorced parents. My wife has divorced parents. So many houses that we're supposed to. Get. And I've I've set a, a new holiday rule a couple years ago: two houses per day max. And even that makes me want to fucking hang myself. But uh, it was getting ridiculous. So, anyways, normally we'll do like that annoying early dinner at like two o'clock which that's not dinner people that's annoying that's to you yeah no dinner uh, to me is is later in the day no to i'm me, a, lunch. i'm a two o'clock three o'clock guy sorry it is a holiday meal whether it's easter thanksgiving or christmas the earlier the better i just it's the the hang up on the the name dinner stop calling it dinner dinner comes later on it's lunch or a holiday meal whatever i, I can dinner. i can get down with holiday meal yeah, I could too. So anyways, uh, this year got all fucked up. The uh, house we were supposed to go to with my mom's family, someone got sick. So I was like, do they have COVID? We don't know. We're just, we're just avoiding it. The wife's newer job. Like if anybody gets just like a you know a cold, they go through this whole protocol, COVID protocol. So 
There's no need to just go get sick for the fuck of it. Plus, we were heading out of town and just didn't want to deal with being sick, even if it was just a little cold. So we avoided that. Uh, we ended up going to my dad's house. We made like a little brunch situation over there. Then we stopped by her sister's house on our way out of town. And here's Is that three houses? Wednesday night. Oh, no, it's two That's houses. Two. My, you, my dad you didn't go to, yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't go to the yeah, first one. Yeah, one got, one got axed, so it made it okay. Um, <laughs> the night before, Big Dick Nick and, and Coley were doing a little Thanksgiving thing. So we, we kind of crashed theirs Wednesday night. And while we're there, like 8.30, I get a call from the electric company that they're going to shut off our power because it's windy. That's what happens here in California. If it gets crazy windy, uh, they just shut off your power because they're too cheap to bury the lines. And they got sued a couple years ago for starting a bunch of fires. So now they're they're all butthurt. We're, like, we're just going to turn off your power every time it gets windy. So at 8.30 on Wednesday, they shut off our power. didn't come on for over 24 hours. Wow. We just didn't open the fridge that night. On Thursday morning, I woke up and I got the generator out, plugged the fridge back in to kind of cool it back down. Luckily, it stayed really cold the whole night. Nothing went bad or anything. Plugged the generator, got things back down the temp. I was supposed to be making shit to take to my dad's house for brunch. <laughs> had to do it via generator. Like I was doing one thing at a time, like plugged the coffee maker in, had some coffee, unplugged that. Then I plugged the little stand mixer in so I could mix shit up, then unplug that. <laughs> and like whatever I needed, just one thing. Because I didn't want to overload the generator. I didn't know, because I wanted to keep the fridge plugged in. I didn't know like how much I could really get going. So I was just doing one thing at a time. And everything I cooked was on the barbecue. It's so, like the bottom of everything was a little burnt, but you know, whatever. It, it worked. No one Yeah, died. it works. Yeah. Yeah. So then you guys lost power, but our other friends, Greg and Shannon, who live, you know, right across the, the other main thoroughfare. Yeah. They didn't lose power. Well, here's what's what's really stupid about that is your other friends are right next to open space that is basically kindling. It's dry. It's brush. And they're right next to it. And that power stayed on. All the open space powered stay on. But us down the street and pretty much out of harm's way, unless it gets real bad. Uh, we lost all of our power. Well, and you know where we live. It says it's a fire zone when you come into the neighborhood, and we right. had power the whole time. I yeah, was I would have called you, but I thought you know I didn't want to make any waves. I knew you had it handled. So <laughs> well, you couldn't. You, you knew he couldn't charge his phone, so you didn't want to waste any of his battery. Yeah, I wanted to make yeah, sure he had it for it. emergency that's a hell, purposes. That's a hell, hell of a friend. Yeah, hell of a friend. So we're like taking dumps by lantern. It was ridiculous. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, so got got the whole brunch made. Went to my dad's, did that. Came back, emptied out the fridge, took it to her sister's house. So because she had an extra <laughs> fridge and freezer in the garage, and left it in there as we went out of town. It's, it's a like, lot of beer, you, Greg. Edison. I know. I told <laughs> we left the beer here, but I told the wife I was like, how? Because her sister's not a big drinker and thinks I drink too much, which I probably do. I said, how funny would it be? Because we called her like, we need to bring stuff over. It's going bad. Is that okay? And she's like, oh, yeah, bring it over. I was like, how funny would it be if I just showed up with like an armful of beer? Like, hurry, where's the fridge? (laughs) It's getting warm. (laughs) The beer has gone bad. Oh, my God. Where's like your cheese and meats? Fuck it. I got more beer. That would have been amazing. Like movie quality scene. Amazing. (laughs) It's all I wanted to do. The wife's like, yeah, I don't I don't think she'd think that's as funny as you would. I was like, that's what would make it funny for me. But uh, alas, I did pulled not, Shannon so. to the side. I think your husband's an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, Shannon's like, duh. <laughs> Shannon cracks a beer and she's like, please tell me more. <laughs> yeah, do tell. <laughs> so, anyways, that was uh, that was Thanksgiving for us. What a shit show. So we have a couple more things to get to uh, before we get to Coley's big news of the day. How about I make a little call to the pen over here? <laughs> He calls to the bullpen for beer. Yeah, he does. He's also I like it. it. I like it, Brian. <laughs> I don't like it, but I like it. I like it, but I don't like it. <laughs> Brian rocking that Dodgers hat. It's horrible. Uh, and also, I think this is appropriate. All right, so I can legally play. <laughs> I am drinking. And I 100% bought this strictly for the can. I am drinking Local Craft Beers. That's the name of the brewery. Local Craft Beer out of Tehachapi, California. Called Beer Slush Doggy Dog, Volume 2, Blue Raz style. And the can looks very much like the Doggy Style album. 6.5%, 5 IBUs, has a 382 and untapped. They say Slush Doggy Dog. My dogs, Bay Area Craft King and Sippin' with Sky, and I got together to develop a heavenly fruited slushy made with real slushy mix and literal tons of fruit. Lay back, 
and enjoy this one doggy style. Uh, as you guys can see, it's like this greenish blue, absolutely chunky. Can't see it. It through almost it looks gray. Alive. It almost looks gray. Yeah, I think that's the camera a little bit. It's, okay. it's uh, like a dark green blue situation. That looks pretty rad. It's kind of cool looking. It's a little freaky looking. No, I'm intrigued on the blue raz. It's meant to be. Because that's a, that's a hard flavor to master. Mm-hmm. The blue the blue raz. Can we just unpack the fact that they said to lay back and enjoy this beer doggy style? Because that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, any, anything, sn- anything mind, Snoop mind, does mind, is mind, doggy mind, style, mind. you know? So it's not like yeah. It's not like what you're thinking of, Brian. It's your fucking mind out of the gutter. Yeah, you creep. <laughs> Come on, man. That's not very lawyer like of you. How dare you? It is it pro bono. <laughs> <laughs> so uh I must say I was really afraid of this one because like I said, I bought it strictly for the art. I said, fuck the algorithm. It was insanely expensive, low alcohol, but great can art. Um great can. It's not bad. <laughs> it it tastes kind of like a warhead. Not quite as sour as like a blue Raz warhead, but uh, a little bit of tartness and kind of that flavor of once the sourness dies down. Yeah, yeah, it's not horrible. Did you guys ever have the uh, like the ices where you go? It was like the ghetto Hell liquor yeah. store you go to, and they give you the chunk, the little tiny chunks. They're like pebbles of ice. Yeah, and they pour the. And you the, squirt your own shit on there. Yeah, it was the well, slush they, puppies. Yeah. Wasn't that the slush puppies? Slush yeah, puppies. Slush yeah, puppies. That's yeah, what it is. Yeah. I always got the blue. The blue is my favorite. Yeah, blue I, I knew. I, I knew I liked you, Brian. I knew it. I knew I liked you. And blue, and now blue's it's the best. All coming out. Yes, yeah. it's, it, this episode is coming full circle, and so am I. <laughs> yeah, this is this is that. I mean, look, it's uh, if you're looking for a beer, this is kind of weird. I'm not gonna lie, but if you're looking for a fucking slushy with a hint of sour and a little bit of booze in it, like it's your jam. It's it's almost I'd say it's it drinks more like a cocktail than a beer. Yeah, ten bucks a can, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was just saying a lot of those overfruited sours and slush beers, I feel like kind of are more cocktails than they are actually yeah. you know, beer. So uh I'm just I'm I'm just really happy for you. I'm not crying over here about my own misfortune, but I'm just I'm really happy for you. <laughs> uh so glad to hear that. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, let's get on to the real important stuff here. Uh, many, many moons ago, there was a bet placed on the NBA Finals. Say what? That's in the Booze League. Yeah, mainly Wiley. He was on this show. In fact, he was on our last, our previous show. And at the time, it was looking bad for the Bucks in the NBA Finals. And uh, we talked a lot of shit about Phoenix as a they, city. They weren't even a, in the Finals. They were down in oh, the, right. the Eastern Conference Championship. That's, That's right. What it, it was right before the finals. Uh, we were talking a lot of shit about Phoenix as a city and as a basketball team because well, Chris shit, Ball, shitty can, city, Chris Ball can suck it. Shitty, yeah, all of it, just <laughs> awful. And he decided to come to Phoenix's defense. And I said, "Let's have a bet. If Phoenix and the Bucks make it to the finals, which of course the Bucks made it, then the uh, winner, you know, has to chug something shitty from that city. And so, of course, if the Bucks win, they would have to chug some Milwaukee's best." Turns out that's extremely impossible to find in California. You can <laughs> get the beast. Come on. Could not I looked. Wiley to his credit looked. What about old uh, Milwaukee? Coley. Coley looked. I even looked online and it said there was one liquor store in Compton that sold old Milwaukee. And I was like, I'm not driving there for that. That's that's not worth it. Um so anyways, we settled by I looked up the worst beers in America and Funny enough, Milwaukee's best was number one on this list I found, but number two, yeah, yeah, it was it, it's yeah, so bad. number two was uh, Natty Light. So with that being said, oh, that is heresy. <laughs> what's worse than Natty Light? <laughs> Red Dog, Red oh. Dog, super bad. Yeah, uh, Natty Ice. Yeah, uh, I, Milwaukee's Keystone, I think is worse. best. The the green one. There's the a green, green one. one. There's like a red one and a green one. I don't know. Well, anyways, this specific <laughs> le- list, which I dug for, it took me forever to find it. It was the first one that popped up on Google, had Natty Light as as the second worst. And so Coley said, I, I will chug that instead of the Milwaukee's best since we can't find it out here. And so far, she is now the only one to pay up on her bet that she didn't even want to be a part of. What? She was roped in by Wiley. 
That wily coyote, I tell you. I took some of the best audio clips from her trying to chug this horrendous tall boy. Uh, here's that. Coley here from the Booze League, actually holding up my end of the deal. I'm about to chug a natty light. I need two different cups because this thing is fucking tall. And down the hatch. Oh, God, it hurts so bad. It hurts the head. I'm crying. Wiley, this is all your fault. Down the hatch. Oh. It's my second one. There's no intermission. The oh, God. <laughs> on, Cut. 20 second pause. I seriously still have a bunch of beer in here. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try not to upchuck. I have tears in my eyes. This is punishment. This really is punishment. Wiley. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. That's it. I yeah, girl. It. <laughs> okay. Can I just I love say. Nick in the bag. Can, can I just say. Nobody made her get a 24 ounce can of Natty Light. Right. Right. And second of all, out of context, that does not sound like a chugging video. <laughs> I'm just going to put it's, that out there right now. It sounds like she's taking a shot of Malort. <laughs> Tastes like an abortion clinic in Iceland. <laughs> it does. But the nice thing about this video, and, and let me remind you, I, I condensed it just to all the best sound bites. Uh, this. Went on for like a couple minutes, but there's uh, a lot of two minute now video. Have, yeah, yeah. We now have my new favorite drop. Oh god, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Which I feel like we needed last week when Coley and I had that awful pumpkin beer. Oh god, it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, we needed so that bad. drop when Deb tried the schnog over the Thanksgiving. Oh holiday. yes, oh, god, that's it's right. So bad. Oh. Yeah, um, I we should mention I, this. I showed my family that video. And just, well, I, I, I should say, tell my people wife's what the video is. Yeah, let's, let's before you you talk about. It, let's tell those people what the video is. First of all, thank you, Coley. Thank you for paying up on the bet. Uh, follow her on the gram at Ice Cole C O L E Beer underscores after each one. You're up, Wiley. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Um, as we talked about last week and a little bit tonight, eggnog flex and I hate it. Uh, Coley and Erica love it. Erica from Necknosh. Erica tried to convince us that this abomination of a beverage called Chnog... Abomination is an understatement. Yeah, was delicious. And what Chnog is, besides barf, is equal parts eggnog to champagne. You heard me right. Eggnog with a carbonated adult beverage added to it. Blech. And it, <laughs> in the video, she, she made a video for us. Man, get her to make it public. Makes a video for us where she's pouring said champagne into the... Ch- not to the fucking barf <laughs> and starts scooping off the top of the bubbles where the bubbles have become like these hard chunks where like the the champagne bubble and the eggnog have just not quite made friends yet and she's like yeah there are chunky bubbles and at, at that point i lost everything including my cookies but then she, s- she scoops them off with the spoon and then eats them and says but i like the chunky bubbles right. and then like pounds her glass of chinog Deb, being the fucking champ that she is, is like, for research, I'm going to do this. So Deb makes a video of making chnog and trying it, and just (laughs) the face she makes is, A, exactly what I thought of (laughs) chnog, but it was was priceless. It was so gross, the chunky bubbles and all that. Now that you're up to speed, Flex, you showed your family said video of Erica making chnog. Not one single person thought that it looked good, nor did it sound good. And then when I let them know that they had chunky bubbles, I am not exaggerating. Everybody just started gagging. Yeah. Just. Well, yeah. Yeah. Ugh, chunky bubble. What? 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 No. No. Sorry, Erica. Love Brian, you, Brian, no. did you. Did you have the pleasure of trying your wife's schnog? Uh, no. I, <laughs> you know. Out of context. Out of context. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I probably. Be the opening of the show. I probably would have tried it if she hadn't reacted so poorly to it. And I kind of feel like mm. my wife is the one who got duped in this situation. She's oh, usually yeah. She's usually the one who, like, you know, plays the game and knows what's up. But this one got her blindsided. Like she was totally into it. She was like, "This is gonna work." If Erica says it, it's got to be true. And so I bought, I I bought the champagne and the eggnog, and watched her do it, and watched that stuff flow over my cutting board. And I was like, "That's not gonna come out." <laughs> it was bad. I mean, and she 
I mean, she said what what she thought of it in the video. She said it was mm-hmm. disgusting and poured it out. So sorry, Erica. Oh god, it's so bad. <laughs> Uh, poor, not poor, sorry, Coley. poor Coley. Poor uh, Coley. Yeah, that that sounds awful. I, we need to have Erica on so she can defend herself, but also there there's no defending. This no, is not th- schnog. This is like the twenty percent of people who I think actually like eggnog, but it's like zero percent of people who like schnog. I looked it up. It's something. It's something like forty percent of Americans like eggnog. That's crazy. I think that's actually was, what I said last show. But uh, I think so. Yeah. You were not far. It was like 43 and you said 40 or something like that. You were not far off. Yeah, it's like roughly the amount of Americans who like cilantro. <laughs> Ooh, that's, that's now 50, we're 50, fighting. Now we're fighting. I like cilantro. Unless you like cilantro, then I'm then we're friends. No, like I'm it. fine with cilantro. Oh, okay, and then I just I exaggerated again. You're not one of those soap people, are you? No, I don't I don't okay. understand that concept. I like using soap. <laughs> not that. <laughs> Attention everybody. Brian is clean. <laughs> Brian <laughs> is a clean individual. I use it in the shower. I use it when I'm washing my hands. <laughs> oh, I use it, it many ma- on my car. Yeah, soap is really universal it's, in terms of great uses. Yeah, what I was referring to was uh, some people have this weird genetic disposition where cilantro tastes like soap. And uh, luckily, I'm not one of those. People. My brother-in-law is apparently one of those people, but I also think he's kind of uh, out of his gourd. So when I swore in elementary school, they were putting cilantro in my mouth. <laughs> hmm. What kind of elementary school did you go to, man? <laughs> well, that's why he works pro bono now. <laughs> so that's much bono. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, all right. Ludicrous libation laws. This one comes from the state of Alabama. Apparently, beer of the month clubs are illegal. Alabama should be illegal. Yeah. Really is it because should. they don't know what months are or they don't know all the months? <laughs> are they intimidated by month naming? <laughs> hey, y'all, what is this July? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Could be. It almost makes me think that they don't know that there's actually 365 days in a calendar year. They're just like, what is mm. today? Today is today. <laughs> well, what day is tomorrow? <laughs> it's tomorrow. <laughs> don't get them started on a leap year. <laughs> It'll really blow their minds. They don't believe uh, it. <laughs> yeah, so don't don't go to Alabama if you're looking to get some uh, beer of the month clubs. What about other of the month clubs like jelly? Oh, of the month jelly. Or, like olive oil? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a great question. Now we must uh, Alabama from Alabama. Yeah. That's not, a- not super offended. <laughs> yeah, Alabamans. Anybody not super offended after the last two minutes of this show? Uh, if that's the case, let us know what else. Or anybody uh, from Mississippi who just wants to pile on. Their yeah, only their, their only comeback will just be they'll they'll DM you and be like roll tide. <laughs> that, 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 that's their only defense. Roll tide. <laughs> yeah, roll tide. Uh, let us know if you don't hate us. But now, <laughs> isn't the goal of the podcast to like attract new listeners? Yeah, like, no, hey, no, Phoenix, no, no. fuck you, Alabama. You're a bunch of idiots. <laughs> it's like that reverse psychology, you know, like. They hate right. us so much, but now they just have to like drop back in to, to see if we say anything more about how shitty Phoenix or how shitty Alabama right, is. Right, right. Or it's like when you had a crush on someone as a little kid, like you're always mean to them. Yeah, you like push them over and stuff. And... Yeah. Let me make it perfectly clear. I do not have a crush on Alabama. <laughs> Roll Tide. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all. Your football team's ugly. Roll Tide. <laughs> That's how it goes. That's exactly how it goes. All right. <laughs> We will move on from the Alabama <laughs> slamming. Uh, Drizzly, alcohol delivery system Drizzly, <laughs> has partnered with 7-Eleven. Uh, oh, Alabama's not on this list. In Arizona, <laughs> California, Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Missouri, Ohio, Oregon, Texas, Virginia, and Washington to deliver the booze from 7-Eleven straight to your house. Good for those people. Mm-hmm. You lazy fucks. <laughs> Oh, wait, California's on that list. Oops. What else? Constellation Brands. Oh, God, this sounds awful. Constellation Brands and Monster Energy Drinks are discussing a deal slash merger. I'm here for it. What what What's the deal? What I mean, is Constellation Brands own anymore? Well, Corona, they got rid of Bell's right? Point. Yeah, they've got a couple of Mexican beers. They've got like uh, some seltzers, I think. Some wines. They have wines now. So what are they trying to do? Just make like... Seltzers, they're trying to be like, extreme. 
<laughs> like drink this monster hard seltzer and then ride your dirt bike. <laughs> Yes. Sounds like, nee, 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 nee. sounds like something Alabama's in for. Oh, you know? <laughs> throwing it back to Alabama. Roll yeah, I mean, I, I, I only see this being uh, the re- or oh, I only see this ending up in a uh, sale to another company. Well, that too, but Monster <laughs> Energy Seltzer garbage thing. But yeah, because uh, you know, bang that energy drink, which is great, and I basically live on, and I never had it. No, oh, it's great. I basically live my life on it. But uh, they came out with a hard seltzer this past summer, I believe. And from everybody I've known who've tried it or bought it, it's just big fucking flop. So mm-hmm. I can only assume Monster and uh, Constellation Brands are trying to figure out something for a energy drink hard seltzer. And I can o- I can only assume it's just going to bomb like, I don't know. Big garbage. And Four Loco is like the caffeine... Well, they got rid of it. Now it's back, but like, yeah, have caffeine you can't have the caffeine. Oh, it's illegal. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know anything about laws and shit, but like, <laughs> I think you yeah, have all people here. You definitely don't. <laughs> I think, you know, they got rid of that sparks. Remember sparks? From I do remember. Sparks, AB. Yes. Dude, yes. that shit was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know. It was just, well, because you're just like crack. It's like booze crack. Mm. Well, dude, it's like, it's, uh, you I'm pretty get, sure it you... killed Chris Farley. It's like, uh, <laughs> wow. You know, like uh, Red Bull vodkas, vodka Red Bulls. Mm. You ever have those? Yeah, yeah, fucking delicious. They're like right. a, a, until you a, have your a, first heart attack. A bazooka Joe I mean, shot, they're still delicious, but fucking delicious. Any kind yeah, of man back in cherry bomb, fucking delicious. Caffeine and alcohol, it unfortunately just fucking tastes delicious. It is What's delicious. a cherry bomb? It's just deliciousness in your mouth. It's like it's like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, but of just like cherries. <laughs> Yeah, Red Bull Cherry Liqueur and Grenadine. Did you guys ever do Jaeger bombs with Jaeger? Oh and- yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That. How did I forget? How could I ever forget? Fucking Jaeger bombs. Jaeger bombs. Jaeger bombs. Yeah. Uh, my my Vegas party days were full of of like Red Bull vodkas. It's just how I stayed up till four uh, in the morning or six in the, the morning. It, it's the best. We did that for uh yeah. like weddings or day before weddings. Yeah. Because like you got to get fucked up, but you also have to stay up for absolutely everything. Right, the cocaine exactly. is so hard to find. Yeah. Well, now it's laced with fentanyl, so back yeah, to the Red yeah, Bull and vodka. Yeah, back go. to the Red Bull and vodkas. Uh, we'll end it on this one. Some, I don't know, I guess good news. Russian River, Russian River Brewing, is going to once again host the Pliny the Younger 2022 release in person at the brewery there in Santa Rosa, California. And, and that's really big news for California. You guys are taking it's, steps forward. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Well, they kind of have to because uh, their online release was such a shit show this year. So it was terrible. I'm never going to forgive them. And I just drank a Pliny. So, <laughs> oh no, you never didn't. Gonna forgive We're still, still spending a bunch of money, but I'm never going to forgive them. <laughs> I stole this bottle. <laughs> oh, okay. I respect okay, you. Okay, intern Brian, you got the bottle <laughs> pro bono. Wink, wink. <laughs> exactly what happened. <laughs> oh my all right that's everything except for hi vanessa oh yes we'll, we'll never forget that hi vanessa never. hope hope uh everyone out there had a great thanksgiving you have any funny uh thanksgiving drunk stories send them our way or uh anything you need us to read for master drunk theater yeah please, please quit quit your job via text and send it to us we'd yeah, appreciate real it real easy yeah please do us all a favor uh thanks for listening thanks for joining follow flex at flex me a beer underscores in between you can follow brian at do you like giving out your gram what's your yeah go ahead all right ucs brian right that's it UC... yeah i got that right okay on the gram and uh we're craft beer republic craft beer republic.com 805-538 beer is the number and mail at craft beer republic Dot com. I think that's everything. I hope everyone is staying very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night.